The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. There was once a great Mikubal. His name was Rabbi Yeshua Basis. Lived many, many years ago. And Rabbi Yeshua Basis was once told in a dream that if anybody needs a certain Yeshua, a certain salvation, Rifua, Beracha, whatever it might be, that they should go to Yitzchak for a Beracha. Rabbi Yeshua Basis woke up. He says, Wow. What a dream. Anybody that needs a Yeshua, they should go to Yitzchak. Psh, I always knew the town baker was a tzaddik, but I didn't know he has the koach to give people berachot. So he went over to the town baker and he says, Rav Yitzchak, you know, I had such an amazing dream. This is what I found out about you. Can you please tell me, uh, what do you do that's so great that you're the one that people should go to for berachot? He says, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't do anything great. Come on, there's got to be something that you do. They go in Hatzot, learning all night. Come on, Yalla, spill the beads. What is it that you do? I, I really don't do anything too great. Ah, come on, Yalla, come on, Yalla, I'm saving, shy now. Come on, come on. He says, I'm telling you, I don't know what I do so great. He's trying to get out of him. So he goes through his week with him. He asks him, what do you do, what do you do? Until they get to Friday. Friday, all of a sudden, Yitzchak the baker remembers. Beautiful story Rabbi Spiro breaks down. He says, actually on Friday, I'll tell you what I do. He says... Well, you see, my oven in the bakery closes at around 2 o'clock, but it's still hot. From all that heat that we were using, Erev Shabbat, it's very hot. So I tell everybody in the town, everybody, whoever wants, please feel free, you can use my oven for free. Come put your hamin, come put your chillant, warm it up, cook it there, whatever you need, the oven's on anyway. But Janin, people come, they put their pots, they put their hamin. One Erev Shabbat, a lady... She's taking her pot out of the oven before Shabbat. And as she's going back home, the pot falls on the floor and she starts crying. Yitzchak the baker, he sees the lady crying. Hazita, her chilling pots all over the floor. But there was really no chilling inside. There was just maybe an egg. The lady pretended to put food inside. She was embarrassed, but she was poverty stricken. She didn't even have money to put the, uh, a chilling up. And she was more embarrassed than the children spilled that she was actually embarrassed that everyone's going to see, look, she really doesn't have anything to show for herself. She doesn't have children. And she was miserable. So Yitzchak the baker went over to her and he says that, I told her, listen, I have an extra children part over here. And I get, went to the oven, I took it out and I said, please, could you take this children part for Shabbat? Yours fell, take this. And she said, but, but this is somebody's. He says, no, no, you don't understand. There's a man that on Erev Shabbat, he puts his children in my oven. But if he doesn't come back by a certain time, that means he's not coming back, and I get to do whatever I want with it. So if he's not back by now, that means it's going to stay here the whole Shabbat. No one's coming to get it. Just please do me a favor. Just take this chillin. She says, really? Yes, please take it. Wow, thank you so much. He says, as a matter of fact, every single Friday, he puts the chillin here, and it doesn't go anywhere. Just come every week, and I'll just give you the chillin. She says, really? That's amazing. Thank you so much. And he says, to Rabbi Yeshua Abbasis, every end of Shabbat, this lady comes, and I give her a chillin pot. He says, wow, that's an amazing chesed that you do. But why doesn't the guy ever come back for his children? He says, Rabbi, there is no guy. It's my chilling pot that I give her. And he says, now I understand why you have the koach to bless B'nai Israel. Now I understand why in Shemaim they told me in my dream that you're the one to go to for berachot. How much can you just sacrifice for another Jew? How much do you care about another Jew? In his later years, it was hard for him to give berachot at. So someone came over to him and he said, Rabbi, if you want, I'll give berachot instead of you. Give me the kawah and I'll give berachot instead of you. Everyone will come to me and I'll give them berachot. Hacham ben Sion said, if you had a havati Yisrael like I have, then you'll have the kawah to give berachot. If you loved B'nai Yisrael like I do, then you could give people berachot. One of the greatest things that the Gedolei Yisrael have is their Mesirut Nefesh. How much they love B'nai Yisrael. And that's very clear what we're seeing from Esther. And that's why the Shefa Hayim says the Ikar Mitzvah of Purim is to love B'nai Yisrael. Give B'nai Yisrael. Think about another Jew. Just give and 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 just give. And, just give. and when you're done, keep on giving. Be there to love B'nai Yisrael. The Mesirut Nefesh. Enjoyed this story? Come again, bring a friend, storiestoinspire.org.